Hello lovely people, welcome to the Jaden Show. I am super excited to be with you today because I have another fantabulous guest ready to introduce to you. Award-winning, multilingual singer, songwriter, really handsome. You are going to meet him in a minute. But first, I'm feeling in a bit of a French mood. Let's go and listen to Matt Stern. Tu tiens mon cœur entre tes mains, you magic Je suis fou de toi quand tu me touches, je perds la tête, it's tragic If you've seen my previous shows, you know now that I know you want to meet Matt, but you're going to have to wait a little bit longer because it's time for a Jaden Show commercial break.
hey guys, I wanted to take this opportunity to let you know about the Jaden Show commercial break starting now. This is amazing news because now every single week you have a couple of minutes to be able to advertise something you want to advertise. So if you have a business, if you have an event coming up, if you have a new album, a uh, art gallery or anything you want to particularly advertise on a show, this is your chance to do it. March and April 2024, the advertisements are free. So please let me know. Get in touch to me on Jaden Cornelius at AOL.com. It will be wonderful to hear from you. If you are a charity or a charitable organization or a nonprofit and you are advertising something with regards to that, then always your advertising is free. So let me know. You will need to send me a between a one and two minute video around that time, if possible, um, something that you want to advertise and I will fit it into this spot. Get on. I'll see you soon. Take care, buddy. Okay, I'm even not going to make you wait any longer because, quite frankly, I don't want to wait any longer. I want to introduce you to the wonderful Mr. Matt Stone. Matt Stern, welcome to the Jaden Show. How are you, lovely man? I'm doing great. How are you, Jaden? I'm not too bad, actually. Not too bad at all. I'm super impressed. Award-winning artist multilingual you must be multilingual as well you're living in mexico no. you speak Spanish. I, I struggle with english and i'm from london <laughs> english is the hardest of them all, english is not easy and you have un poquito espanol no actually i can sing in different language i can sing i've sung in tagalog japanese german french italian spanish maltese but i couldn't tell you the meaning of any of the songs that I've sung. Honestly, I think that's the fa that's my favorite way in is singing in other languages. Just do it. Yeah, it's quite interesting because I sing because I live in Mexico. <clears throat> I sing a lot in Spanish here, and one of the hotels that I'm kind of resident in, the 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 bar staff are like, "Oh my god, you know that white boy? He's from London, but you should hear him. He sings Spanish like he's like Mexican." And I'm like, just don't ask me what it bloody means, mate, because I couldn't tell you. you. Know, the friend that I sing with often here has been singing with me in French, and she also doesn't really speak a word of French, but she mm -hmm. convinces everyone. It's the same idea. It's just if your ear is attuned, then you I actually, get I actually quite like it. It's almost like the lyrics are taken away from me, so the feeling of the song dictates how I feel, and I haven't actually been wrong yet. Which means there's some really like on the covers that I do, there's some really good producers and writers because what they were trying to portray, even before the lyrics go in, I'm feeling that. That's, exactly. Uh, it kind of penetrates deeper. You don't really yeah. need to know all the literal meanings. Yeah. And it's quite cool. I love it. I I guess because I'm English, I've been speaking English for over fifty years. Therefore, to start being able to sing and just hearing how you know, even something really simple, like maybe like an ABBA song, like the winner takes it all. I sing that in Spanish and I know the whole vibe of the song, but to kind of now I know even with what those, Sp not what necessarily what the Spanish lyrics mean, but I know what they should mean. So mm -hmm. even now to kind of really feel a different language is quite, I'm quite, I'm quite excited about, but how many languages do you speak? Well, I sing it and speak it. a lot of the same ones you mentioned, um, Spanish, French, Japanese. I've dabbled in German, Italian, Mandarin. Um, wow. Man. Also, I went, when I was still in Montreal, I took um, an African singing class with um, okay. a, a musician there from Ivory Coast. So I um, sang songs from, from Congo and from Senegal. Yeah, so I've, I've dabbled. That's amazing. Cool. My dream, actually. <laughs> One day when I grow up, my dream is I want to do a an album of 12 to 15 songs and every song is in a different language. Mm. This is what I would and sound convincing doing it. I've sung a little bit of. I don't know. I don't know, but it wasn't it wasn't one of the African languages. And um, I think it could even be Kenyan. But um, in back in the nineties, when I was doing doing like pop stuff, the introduction 
to this song was no mas is alwas a gulu le kile. So that's my only bit. I don't know what it means. I think it's when we are born, we're born free, actually. But um, that's the only bit of African language that I've dabbled in. <laughs> but I dabble in it, mate. Name. You are award winning artist. <laughs> so tell me about these awards. Uh, well, they all come from different places. I, there were a couple of awards for music videos um, a couple of years ago. And um, so a music video we re released at that time was in a few festivals, um, some of them in the States, some of them in India. And um, more recently, it's since releasing my French album, that's sort of opened a lot of, it's gotten a lot of recognition. I'm guessing you um, speak French. That's, is that your first language? I, I pretend. No, it's actually my second language. I'm originally anglophone from montreal okay but i grew up in a french immersion and i've always had a lot of francophone friends so since moving to the west coast of canada i kind of i missed it so i started singing well just like you i was i mean i just started kind of dabbling in singing another language and it opened up all these doors that's amazing man that's so super yeah. cool so tell me let's go back to little mini stern mini matt right yeah I still feel like so, mini Matt. I do. And I'm in my fifties, dude. Like, I'm like, when is this boy going to grow up? But anyway, so, so going back to mini Matt, when you were kind of running around in diapers, you know, what music was going on around you? What were your first influences of music that's kind of created the Mr. Matt Stern that is successful today? It was so varied, you know, speaking of African music, some of the stuff playing around my house, my mom really liked Mori Kante. I don't okay. know if you remember him from the '90s, but um, that was playing a lot in my house. Um, There's also things like Paul Simon, Billy okay. Joel, um, and Peter Beatles, um, but really all over the map. And and as soon as like I had access to listening to music, I just devoured all genres. Everything you heard, that was it, like a sponge. Yeah. Did you have yeah. any favorites and preferences? I always really liked, well, when I was a bit older, I really gravitated towards soulful songwriters, people like Tracy Chapman. Oh, yeah. Um, I really love, I just yesterday was fiddling with a song by Patty Griffin. Do you know her? I've heard the name, but I couldn't tell you a, na a name of her song, but I have heard her name. Yes, absolutely. She's also someone who writes in a lot of different genres, but she's she's known for kind of very intimate, folky songs often. Okay. Um, yeah. Just kind of sometimes on the intimate side and then on the on the kind of soulful, authentically expressive. And this was in your youth. This is when you were young. Yeah, already when I was young, I think. Wow, okay. So you were feeling like the passion of it back in the day. Mm -hmm. I was drawn to, to kind of finding different ways to express myself and to to just see what was out there. Amazing, man. So when did it when did you kind of I don't know, touch that little connection button that kind of made you think, oh, shit, I actually want to be doing this more seriously. I can't not do this. I think already when I was running around in diapers, I was making Oh, wow, really? <laughs> but then I think as soon as I had access, had like channels to express it. So once I started to learn guitar and piano and then in high school, I picked up trombone. So as soon wow. as I had means to get it out, I just, I just needed to. Really so that was the most amazing thing about Canada. I have lots of friends in the Toronto area and in the Ontario area, rather. And um, they all learn like multi musical instruments as kids. In England, mm -hmm. we had the recorder, and then you could, you know, you could maybe take an, an instrument, but it would be in your own time. And then you've got shitloads of homework to do. So you don't really have time to do that and homework. So it was never kind of a fun part of of school whereas my friend was like before he got to like three was like grade nine of saxophone piano guitar like i'm like oh my god you know actually my upbringing in school was more like yours in school oh, really really just recorder maybe some xylophone and bells but so the guitar learning guitar piano and trombone came a little bit later when i started high school and took private lessons oh really oh so you were like well committed yeah i was so keen to just sort of find ways again to express myself okay so mini matt is now a little bit older you're playing multi-musical instruments at what point did that right this is now serious this is how i need to were you in bands did you go solo like how did it come about how was matt stone created 
I think around that time I played in bands. You know, I had a friend who lived around the corner from me and he played drums and I played guitar and we just jammed for hours. And I was pretty, my my life was pretty focused on school and friends and other things, but music just kept taking up more and more place. Okay. And again, just became kind of a really innate compulsive drive. And so, I found that like, I needed to start leaving those other things, like namely focus on school, because I just, as soon as I started writing songs, I wanted to see them fleshed out. I wanted to get into the studio. Um, so I had lots of moments of truth where it was like kind of a diversion path either I do what's expected of me and kind of something more conventional. I was like, no, but I think I really need to yeah. record these songs. And I, it's, I'm sure you can relate. It's like, did, did you have a supportive have a family? Choice, though? Cause most families, including mine were like, but you need to work in a bank because music don't pay money. Definitely. There's an element of that. It was mixed because I think say my parents, they were intrigued by what, what was coming out of me. They also oh, wanted okay. me to be practical. I had to sort of like, I think especially my dad, he had to see what was possible with those fledgling songs when they were really kind of rough. He was like, you know, definitely work in a bank or be a doctor or something really solid. Yeah. But, um, but he was also, he kind of, it, it evolved. Once he saw what those songs could become, he was like, okay, there's something here. You should there is something that. you need to be doing with this. Yeah, that's some, my father was incredibly musical, desperately musical, could literally pick up any instrument and pretty much play it from the harmonica to the banjo to the ukulele the i mean like everything i didn't inherit any of that <laughs> my, my dad also sings so I'm, I'm 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 an all right singer but they were just like i think we were kind of i just don't think we had much money so i think they wanted to put me into drama school but i was way too shy as a kid so that just i think i just kicked kicked up like crazy because i was too shy to go to something like that but um yeah i never really got pushed into the whole music thing i didn't really have much choice it kind of i think if you're part of it you can't really escape it anyway really to be fair it depends a lot on what's in your environment doesn't it like i've yeah, had yeah. other friends who just grew up in musical families and it was just like breathing to be singing yeah, all together that wasn't really the case with me i'm the kind of the only one in my family who makes music yeah well same for me as well so when was your first gig how old was you when you had your first gig your first live performance and started gaining your first fans i'd say there was a high school talent show but what sticks in my memory a little more was maybe a year later there was a place in montreal that doesn't exist anymore called zeke's gallery where it was an art gallery on one of the main streets called saint laurent where um you could play an acoustic show and it would be recorded for posterity and so I, I invited everyone I knew and we packed the place. It was a smallish room and they had never seen anything like it because I was so motivated <laughs> to share, again, share these songs. I was 17, I think. And um, I had that same friend, the drummer, play conga to accompany yeah. me. And yes, I probably still have a live recording of that when I'm brave enough to listen back to it. <laughs> and you need to be putting that on YouTube. That's got to be. <laughs> There's no video, fun. though. Oh, no audio. video. Yeah. That's all right. Just put some accompanying photos or something. That would be super cool to listen to. So yeah. at this particular point, you're, you know, you, you've got a few things coming up. When did it become like Matt Stern is now a business and I need to be promoting that and I need to be writing and recording and doing your videos are excellent, by the way. Really, really love them. Um, Thank you. So when did, I mean, is that a recent thing? Is that a pre-COVID thing? I mean, how how did that kind of take form to create present day, Matt? I'm definitely one of those people who was reluctant to be business minded. I'm very like, um, well, you mentioned COVID. I think it was during COVID that I kind of gave in to be more active on social media. Because before then, I was a little bit present, but I was kind of like, I hate this stuff. I want to be like in person with people. But yeah. as for so many people during COVID, it was this is the only way we have to connect. So I, that my involvement kind of exploded during that time. I find, yeah, if um, anything that's kind of related to brand or appearance or business always stems back to kind of the intrinsic motivation of like, I want to share these songs. What's the best way to share these songs? Yeah. Um, so I think I've, become less reluctant i've become more more confident about this is what i have to offer 
I want you all to see it. And like you mentioned, the videos, those always stemmed from friendships, collaborations that were often kind of shots in the dark at first. It's just kind of intuitive, like, well, let's make something. I don't really have a plan. I don't really have a vision yet, but you're excited about the but song. Let's see I'm what comes out, about. right? Yeah, that's, it's always been very and a very experimental approach. That's really amazing, man. So what is Matt Stone doing now? Right now, well, the next thing I'm doing, I'm still kind of following the the impetus of this French album, which has had me go to a lot of events throughout Canada. Okay. So I'll be going to New Brunswick for a showcase next. Okay. And that's, is, that, is that far from you? or? It's the other side of the country. Oh, wow. Really. So it's kind of like the, <laughs> So it is quite then. Yeah. Um, it's like when I was in Montreal, to go to the UK is as far as going to Vancouver. Like wow. You might as well go to Europe, then cross the country. See, when you're from London, it's a little bit difficult because you can do the whole of the country in like six or seven hours. Now I live in Mexico, and from where I live, well, from Mexico City to Cancun is probably the same distance from London to Barcelona, I guess. So right. I'm starting to kind of now grasp the joys of living it in a bloody <laughs> big part of landmass. Yes, so, in Canada is an extreme version of that. Um, but no complaints. I'm excited about this trip. And the purpose of this showcase is to open up opportunities for touring next year. Amazing. Um, yeah, and I also have some new recordings in the works with a new producer. I'm very excited okay. about. Do, do you put? Do you kind of do production as well as everything else, or do you kind of leave that for somebody else? I do like kind of garage band production. And again, during COVID, I gave myself this project of tinkering with like with home recording a lot more. I went a lot further into creating beats and that sort of thing. Sweet man, but. I wasn't really at a level where I wanted to release those that, that I wanted to bring those as demos to a producer who could really okay. accentuate them. Okay. So that's where I'm at with those. Okay. And is that your still level of production now? Are you still kind of like, I can yeah. put down, is that like you can still put down the basics of everything now, but at the end of the day, you still need to, you still kind of just want that, that little bit of polish at the end. Totally. Yeah. I don't think I'm someone, I'm someone who likes to experiment on my own, but I really like to, um, be able to delegate to someone who where it's the, they're really their expertise and then they have kind of a fresh perspective. I really value that collaboration. Right. No, that's perfect, man. So what does the future hold for you? What are your plans? Obviously you just mentioned touring next year. So this is quite exciting internationally or just within the, the Canadian circuit, which of course is bloody huge, but what are, what are your well, plans? It's still relatively new to me to have kind of one foot into, like we were talking about languages. So I'm kind of, the French sphere can lead me to like Francophone Europe and other places in the in the world where they're French speaking. But I, like the new recordings are English again. So I would love to tour more internationally. I, I have done a bit of touring in Japan and I was gonna go back just before COVID. So that's uh, kind of on my radar too. Um, yeah, I'd really like to go go more global as a next Amazing. step. Well, I think you need to sing in Mexico, dude. You need to start on your Spanish now. I love singing in Spanish. That's one of my favorites. Yeah. That's actually <laughs> one of my favorite. It's one of my favorite sung languages. I think it's really, really beautiful language. Yeah. So I just wish I understood a little bit more what I'm saying. That would be perfect. But no, I <laughs> to listen How long to have you been there? You're gonna hate. You're gonna think I'm a lazy bastard now. I've been here <laughs> nearly nine years. But I get that when you're an expat, it's kind of it's easier than people think to kind of stay in your. Well, I don't your... actually. I kind of I'm in the mountains and I'm the only white boy in town. So well, in how this, do you communicate with no one in Spanish? In Spanish, but I mean it's it's okay. I can pretty much wheedle my way through a conversation and probably understand probably 50 to 60 percent but you know and i do my duolingo every day Cada dia okay. con duolingo. but i've not heard one person speak in the same bloody accent as duolingo yeah <laughs> there's that and they all they've all got their like modismos their like their slang and each region has a different word so i've just kind of picked up some slang from like Mexico City and Cancun. And then in Chiapas, there's a different word, the kind of this part, Totsil or whatever it is, part of a different language. 
And I'm like, I'm back to square one again. I have no, now no idea what anyone is saying to me. <laughs> but I can kind of get myself, I said, I can get myself through a conversation. And I'm also probably better than some of the, the, um, the, the immigrant community um, that have been living in Mexico for 30 years because kind of I'm around it a lot more, really. And I love yeah, it. Sorry, I really you. love it. I'm just blonde, old, and stupid. And that's really <laughs> not great when you need to. <laughs> learn a new but, language but it sounds like you're motivated so that's a big incentive yeah well i need to i need to eat and drink you understand so boy's got a order in spanish so. exactly <laughs> <laughs> so can how how well is your is your french you say is that your second language that's my second language as i mentioned i grew up learning it so i'm quite fluent um i think when i'm in a period of immersion when i'm surrounded by french speakers it just becomes very second nature okay that's amazing man yeah. That's amazing. And do you speak any other language or just sing them? I speak Spanish and Japanese, and I started to learn Italian and a bit of German. Yeah. It's because Japanese. you're young. Your brain is more spongy. That's what it is. That's my excuse. That was the key. <laughs> my brain is spongy, but it's also been a big passion. Like alongside music, yeah. I think forever I've been really keen on languages and because of how it kind of exposes you to other worldviews and you can Absolutely. connect with people more deeply. Like language barriers are, are real, right? When you when you yeah. can't speak the same oh, language absolutely. with someone, you can only go so deep. Yeah, so I love, I love, I feel like it's a whole different side of my personality that comes out when I get to speak another language. No, completely, completely. I I remember having like a whole day in bed, depressed because I'd moved to a part of Mexico and no one spoke English, and I spoke five words. If you in if poor and favor is classed as two. <laughs> Right, so I spoke five words. I was not understanding anybody or anything. And Isolating, I just, right? It was really intense. Like, you can't even pop into a supermarket and go, oh, my God, it's what a lovely weather it is today. You know, or you can't say, is there, like, any – I was veggie at the time. So is, is there any meat in these, you know, in this particular can or something? Like, you really cannot communicate at all. And I started doing lessons, but the, the, my teacher then didn't speak any English, so would just talk to me for an hour and a half in Spanish. And I would go home, and it would just sounded like white noise. There was nothing I picked up. We sat at a table. He spoke. I understood nothing, you know. Yeah. So it was kind of a, a little bit shit. And then I realized that for 15 years, my profession before, you know, while I was – earning money to carry on with my music and do my stuff was I was working with severely disabled kids and adults. And some of them were on the autistic spectrum and were had zero verbal ability. Like they were completely mm. verbal, but I used to understand them and I used mm. to be able to have conversation. I was the only one talking, you understand, but I, <laughs> but I could kind of pick up like by eye movements, body language, grunts and groans. And I thought, why am I getting so depressed about not understanding when I've understood people that are nonverbal. And I think it was my my pressure to learn was my biggest block. Whereas when I moved, to, I, so I moved to Cancun, where mm -hmm. I think it's like Cancun and Miami are very similar, the fact that in, they just speak more English in Cancun than Miami, I think. But um, And so I, the pressure was off. So because the pressure was off, I wanted to experiment more. So if I had one word that day or that week, I would use it in all my sentences. Like I go, I need to go to the shop to buy manzanas. <laughs> <laughs> and then I need to go to the shop to buy dos manzanas. And then bit by bit, I would just keep including, you know, like every single word that I learned. So my Spanglish was amazing. I think you're really onto something about pressure because you made me think about how when kids learn languages before they're self-conscious, they just, they are so spongy. And mm -hmm. not just because their brains are... <laughs> Are yeah. young, but because they're not concerned about yes, absolutely. Um, Look, you're stupid, sounding stupid, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's just not on their radar at all. So yeah. if we can kind of mimic that as adults, then we can go a lot further. Listen, that that was kind. Of, so that was kind of my awakening. So I thought I obviously don't look Mexican. So and the difference between Mexican and British is if you speak British with a funny accent in England, you're probably going to get ridiculed. That ourselves. Not everyone, but it does happen. But if you even try to speak Spanish in Mexico, they're like, oh, amigo, felicidad, tu hablas español. 
you know they're just so supportive of you yeah. you know and they will also help you if you ask them to help so it was really great that i could go um like yo necesito in my english accent and they'd be like oh, yeah. and they're like oh, good try pero es yo necesito Tú, tú hablas muy fuerte con tus palabras, señor. So they were just kind of like, they would really help me and advise me. And because there was no pressure, it was cool. Like, I didn't feel that I wasn't out to impress. Like I said, I'm obviously not Mexican. So the fact that I was trying was the most important thing. And I know people that have lived in the same town as me for 35 years and could just say, Quiero dos cervezas por favor. That's it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> After 30 years of living there. That, that was an American I, Spanish accent? Yeah. Dos <laughs> veces. And I just kind of think, you know, you're living in a Spanish speaking country. So I think it's actually quite rude that you don't at least try, you know, a little bit more. So, but no, I'm very impressed with your um, multilingualism, if that's an English word. I, I think it is. It is now, it's a <laughs> word. and I'm even more impressed with your music and your passion for your art as well. So where can people find you? Because obviously by now, they're all completely in love with you and your music. Where, we, where am I sending them to, Matt? Tell me. I think the music videos are a fun place to start. It's also all streamable on Apple Music and Spotify, um, and hopefully on tour also. Okay, so you'll be posting dates on your social media of where you're going to be, right? Yeah. Okay, and when are we expecting the next song and music video coming out? Do you have any plans? I think early next year. Okay. It's probably, probably, probably beginning of next year. Okay, so kids at home, chill out. Let's just get through Christmas. Then, when everything is getting bleak because it's winter time, then you can start looking forward to Matt's new single coming out. That's the key. I mean, that is amazing. Genius idea, young man. Genius idea. <laughs> Matt, thank you. I come from a winter place. so. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, do that. Hmm. That. but thank you so much for being part of my show kids at home you know you're going to want to follow him so before you finish your peanut butter on toast and cup of tea make sure you've popped over to all of his social media platforms and the music and download platforms and to uh to so share like comment subscribe follow did i mention share and subscribe i think i did so make sure you do all of that and go and say hi to matt as well matt thank you so much for being part thank of you my for show out, let's really catch fun. up next year when your new single yes. comes out and let's do a little Jaden show great. special to talk about it perfecto perfecto gracias señor y cuando tú cantas en español avísame tal vez hay un dúo si sí, vamos a cantar juntos ay perfecto si sí. estoy muy emocionado <laughs> okay amigo you take good care of yourself and we will catch up very soon okay sounds great see you later buddy take care bye 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 what a super super lovely guy bloody talented bloody lovely easy on the eye i don't like him at all quite frankly <laughs> i hope you've enjoyed meeting him please before you switch off your computer go and follow matt on all of his social media platforms go and check out the rest of his music on not only youtube but on his music download and streaming platforms too you will not be disappointed and i know you're going to already want to share him with all of your friends because he's so shareable quite frankly thank you so much for joining me today guys on the Jaden show i'm already getting a little bit excited about next week's special guest as well so things are good things are good while you're hanging around the computer don't forget to follow me subscribe like share and comment on my social media platforms too it'll be lovely to see you on other platforms as well i hope you have a wonderful new week i hope you have an incredibly productive and safe one and I'm going to leave you with some more music by the lovely Matt. See you next week, kids. Stay beautiful. Bye-bye.
with me, I'll take you for a ride Lead you by the hand, pick you up so you can fly Keep running, I'll still be on your side Lift you off the ground, when you fall I'll make you high So don't tell me I don't care the way I should Don't love you like you always thought I would I'm doing the best I can Stay with me, I'll protect your heart Every time you fear something is keeping us apart My only wish is that we stay this way Keep on telling me that you are never gonna stray So don't tell me I don't